Hi guys, it's Melissa from Starry Family Farm. We are here for our Bible in a Year challenge reading. And so for June 5th, we will be reading 2 Kings 11 through 13, Psalms 71, and Romans 13. So 2 Kings chapter 11. Athaliah rules in Judah. When Athaliah, the mother of King Ahaziah of Judah, learned that her son was dead, she sent out to destroy the rest of the royal family. But Ahaziah's sister, Jehosheba, the daughter of King Jehoram, took Ahaziah's infant son, Josh, and stole him away from among the rest of the king's children who were about to be killed. Jehosheba put Josh and his nurse in a bedroom to hide him from Athaliah so the child was not murdered. Josh and his nurse remained hidden in the temple of the Lord for six years while Athaliah ruled over the land. <coughs> hmm. So the grandma wanted to kill all of her grandsons. Okay. Revolt against Athaliah. In the seventh year of Athaliah's reign, Jehuada of the priests summoned the commanders, the Karite mercenaries and the guards to come to the temple of the Lord. He made a pact with them and made them swear an oath of loyalty there in the Lord's temple. Then he showed them the king's son. Jehuana told them, this is what you must do. A third of you who are on duty on the Sabbath are to guard the royal palace itself. Another third of you are to stand guard at the surgate, and the final third must stand guard behind the palace guard. These three groups will all guard the palace. The other two units will who are off duty on the Sabbath must stand guard for the king at the Lord's temple. Form a bodyguard for the king and keep your weapons in hand. Any unauthorized person who approaches you must be killed. Stay right beside the king at all times. <coughs> so the commanders did everything just as Jehuada the priest ordered. The commanders took charge of the men reporting for duty that Sabbath, as well as those who were get going off duty. They brought them all to Jehoiada the priest, and he supplied them with the spears and shields that had once belonged to King David and were stored in the temple of the Lord. The guards stationed themselves around the king with their weapons already. They formed a line from the south side of the temple around to the north side and all around the altar. Then Jehoiada brought out Josh, the king's son, and placed the crown on his head. He presented Josh with a copy of God's covenant and proclaimed him king. They anointed him, and all the people clapped their hands and shouted, Long live the king! The death of Athaliah. When Athaliah heard all the noise made by the guards and the people, she hurried to the Lord's temple to see what was happening. And she saw the newly crowned king standing in his place of authority by the pillar, as was the custom at times of coronation. The officers and trumpets were surrounding him, trumpeters were surrounding him, and people from all over the land were rejoicing and blowing trumpets. When Athaliah saw all this, she tore her clothes in despair and shouted, Treason! Treason! Then Jehoiada the priest ordered the commanders who were in charge of the troops, take her out to the temple and kill anyone who tries to rescue her. Do not kill her here in the temple of the Lord. So they seized her and led her out to the gate where horses entered the palace grounds and she was killed there. Jehoiada's religious reforms. Then Jehoiada made a covenant between the Lord and the king. Then Jehoiada made a covenant between the Lord and the king and the people that they would be the Lord's people. He also made a covenant between the king and the people. And all the people of the land went over to the temple of Baal and tore it down. They demolished the altars and smashed the idols to pieces. And they killed Mad of the priests of Baal in front of the altars. Jehoiada the priest stationed guards at the temple of the Lord. Then, he, then the commanders, the Karite mercenaries, the guards, and all the people of the land escorted the king from the temple of the Lord. They went through the gate of the guards and into the palace. And the king took his seat on the royal throne. So all the people of the land rejoiced, and the city was peaceful because Athaliah had been killed at the king's palace. Josh was seven years old when he became king. Okay, chapter 12. Josh repairs the temple. Josh began to rule over Judah in the seventh year of King Jehu's reign in Israel. He reigned in Jerusalem 40 years. His mother was Zibiah from Beersheba. All his life, Josh did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight because Jehoiada the priest instructed him. Yet even so, he did not destroy the pagan shrines, and the people still offered sacrifices and burned incense there. One day, King Josh said to the priests, Collect all the money brought as a sacred offering to the Lord's temple, whether it is a regular assessment, a payment of vows, or a voluntary gift. <coughs> let, let the priests take some of the money to pay for whatever repairs are needed at the temple. But by the 23rd year of Josh's reign, the priests still had not repaired the temple. So King Josh called for Jehoiada and the other priests and asked them, 
Why haven't you repaired the temple? Don't use any more gifts for your own needs. From now on, it must all be spent on getting the temple into good condition. So the priests agreed not to collect any more money from the people, and they also agreed not to undertake the repairs of the temple themselves. Then Jehoiada the priest bored a hole in the lid of a large chest and set it on the right-hand side of the altar at the entrance of the temple of the Lord. The priest guarding the entrance put all of the people's contributions into the chest. Whenever the chest became full, the court secretary and the high priest counted the money that had been brought to the Lord's temple and put it into bags. Then they gave the money to the construction supervisors who used it to pay the people working on the Lord's temple. <coughs> the carpenters, the builders, the masons, and the stonecutters. They also used the money to buy timber and cut stone for repairing the Lord's temple, and they paid any other expenses related to the temple's restoration. The money brought to the temple was not used for making silver cups, lamps, numbers, basins, trumpets, or any other articles of gold or silver for the temple of the Lord. It was paid out to the workmen. He used it for the temple repairs. No accounting was required from the construction supervisors because they were honest and faithful workers. However, the money that was contributed for guilt offerings and sin offerings was not brought into the Lord's temple. It was given to the priests for their own use. The end of Joshua's reign. About this time, King Haziel of Aram went to war against Gath and captured it. Then he turned to attack Jerusalem. King Josh collected all the sacred objects that Jehoshaphat Jehoram and Ahazi, the previous kings of Judah, had dedicated along with what he himself had dedicated. He then sent them all to Haziel along with all the gold in the treasuries of the Lord's temple and the royal palace. So Haziel called up his attack on Jerusalem. The rest of the events in Joshua's reign and all his deeds are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Judah. But his officers plotted against him and assassinated him at Beth Milo on the road to Silla. The assassins were Jazabad, son of Shim Shimi and Jehoshabad, son of Shomer, both trusted advisors. Josh was buried with his ancestors in the city of David. Then his son, Amaziah, became the next king. Chapter 13, Jeho, Jehoaz rules in Israel. Jehoaz, son of Jehu, began to rule over Israel in the 23rd year of King Josh's reign in Judah. He reigned in Samaria 17 years. But he did what was evil in the Lord's sight. He followed the example of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, continuing the sins of idolatry that Jeroboam, son of Nebat, had led Israel to commit. So the Lord was very angry with Israel, and he allowed King Haziel of Aram and his son, Ben-Hadad, to defeat them time after time. Then Jeho Jehoahaz prayed for the Lord's help, and the Lord heard his prayer. The Lord could see how terribly the king of Aram was oppressing Israel. So the Lord raised up a deliverer to rescue the Israelites from the tyranny of the Arameans. Then Israel lived in safety again as they had in former days, but they continued to sin following the evil example of Jeroboam. They even set up an Asher pole in Samaria. Finally, Jehoahaz's army was reduced to 50 mountain troops, 10 chariots, and 10,000 foot soldiers. The king of Aram had killed the others like they were dust under his feet. The rest of the events in Jehoahaz's raid and all his deeds, included, including the extent of his power, are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Israel. When Jehoahaz died, he was buried in Samaria with his ancestors, and his son, Jehoash, became the next king. Jehoash rules in Israel. Jehosh? Maybe Jehosh. Rules in Israel. Jehosh, son of Jehoahaz, began to rule over Israel in the 37th year of King Josh's reign in Judah. He reigned in Samaria 16 years, but he did what was evil in the Lord's sight. He refused to turn from the sins of idolatry that Jeroboam, son of Nebat, had led Israel to commit. The rest of the events in Jehosh's reign and all his deeds, including the extent of his power and his war with King Amaziah of Judah, are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Israel. When Jehosh died, he was buried with his ancestors in Samaria. Then his son, Jeroboam II, became the next king. Elisha's final prophecy. When Elisha was in, his, was in his last illness, King Jehosh of Israel visited him and wept over him. My father, my father, the chariots and charioteers of Israel, he cried. Elisha told him, get a bow and some arrows. And the king did as he was told. Then Elisha told the king of Israel to put his hand on the bow, and Elisha laid his own hand on the king's hand. Then he commanded, open that eastern window, and he opened it. Then he said, shoot. So he did. Then Elisha proclaimed, this is the Lord's arrow, full of victory over Aram, Aram, for you will completely conquer the Arameans at Aphek. Now pick up the other arrows and strike them against the ground. So the king picked up and struck the ground three times. But the man of God was angry with him. You should have struck the ground five or six times, he exclaimed. 
Then he would have beaten a ram until they were entirely destroyed. Now you will be victorious only three times. Then Alicia died and was buried. Groups of Moabite raiders used to, used to invade the land each spring. Once when some Israelites were burying a man, they spied a band of these raiders, so they hastily threw the body they were burying into the tomb of Elisha. But as soon as the body touched Elisha's bones, the dead man revived and jumped to his feet. Wow. King Haziel of Aram had oppressed Israel during the entire reign of King Jehoaz. But the Lord was gracious to the people of Israel, and they were not totally destroyed. He pitied them because of his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And to this day, he still has not completely destroyed them or banished them from his presence. King Haziel of Aram died, and his son, Ben-Hadad, became the next king. Then Jehosh, son of Jehoaz, recaptured from Ben-Hadad, son of Haziel, the towns that Haziel had taken from Jehosh's father, Jehoaz. Jehosh defeated Ben-Hadad on three occasions and so recovered the Israelite towns. Okay. Psalm 71. O Lord, you are my refuge. Never let me be disgraced. Rescue me. Save me from my enemies, for you are just. Turn your ear to listen and set me free. Be to me a protecting rock of safety where I am always welcome. Give the orders to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. My God, rescue me from the power of the wicked, from the clutches of cruel oppressors. O Lord, you alone are my hope. I have trusted you, O Lord, from childhood. Yes, you have been with me from birth. For my mother's womb, you have cared for me. No wonder I am always praising you. My life is an example to many, because you have been my strength and protection. That is why I can never stop praising you. I declare your glory all day long. And now in my old age, don't set me aside. Don't abandon me when my strength is failing. For my enemies are whispering against me. They are plotting together to kill me. They say, God has abandoned him. Let's go and get him, for there is no one to help him now. Oh, God, don't stay away. My God, please hurry to help me. Bring disgrace and destruction on those who accuse me. May humiliation and shame cover those who want to harm me. But I will keep on hoping for you to help me. I will praise you more and more. I will tell everyone about your righteousness. All day long I will proclaim your saving power, for I am overwhelmed by how much you have done for me. I will praise your mighty deeds, O Sovereign Lord. I will tell everyone that you, are, that you alone are just and good. O God, you have taught me from my earliest childhood, and I have constantly told others about the wonderful things you do. Now that I am old and gray, do not do not abandon me, O God. Let me proclaim your power to this new generation, your mighty miracles to all who come after me. Your righteousness, O God, reaches to the highest heavens. You have done such wonderful things. Who can compare with you, O God? You have allowed me to suffer much hardship, but you will restore me to life again. And lift me up from the depths of the earth. You will restore me to even greater honor and comfort me once again. Then I will praise you with music on the harp because you are faithful to your promises, O God. I will sing for you with a lyre, O Holy One of Israel. I will shout for joy and sing your praises for you have redeemed me. I will tell about your righteous deeds all day long. For everyone who tried to hurt me has been shamed and humiliated. In Romans 13. Respect for authority. Obey the government, for God is the one who put it there. All governments have been placed in power by God, so those who refuse to obey the laws of the land are refusing to obey God, and punishment will follow. For the authorities do not frighten people who are doing right, but they frighten those who do wrong. So do what they say, and you will get along well. The authorities are sent by God to help you, but if you are doing something wrong, of course you should be afraid, for you will be punished. The authorities are established by God for that very purpose, to punish those who do wrong. So you must obey the government for two reasons, to keep from being punished and to keep a clear conscience. Pay your taxes too for these same reasons. For government workers need to be paid so they can keep on doing the work God intended them to do. Give to everyone what you owe them. Pay your taxes and import duties and give respect and honor to all to whom it is due. Love fulfills God's requirements. Pay all your debts except the debt of love for others. You can never finish paying that. If you love your neighbors, you will fulfill all the requirements of God's law. For the commandments against adultery and murder and stealing and coveting and any other commandment are all summed up in this one commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to anyone, so love satisfies all of God's requirements. Another reason for right living is that you know how late it is. Time is running out. Wake up for the coming of our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is almost gone. The day of salvation will soon be here. Don't, so don't live in darkness. Get out of your evil deeds. Shed them like dirty clothes. Clothe yourself with the armor of right living as those who live in the light. We should be decent and true in everything we do so that everyone can approve of our behavior. 
Don't participate in wild parties and getting drunk, or in adultery and immoral living, or in fighting and jealousy. But let the Lord Jesus Christ take control of you, and don't think of ways to indulge your evil desires. That's all for today's reading. Thanks for joining. We'll see you next time.